Hello everyone, I'm Reza and I would like to welcome you to my new course Facial Rigging for Beginners. These videos are designed to be taken in sequence and they come with valuable tips and tricks to reinforce long concepts. In this series of videos, we build on a concept covered in Rigging for Beginners series which I previously uploaded on YouTube. So if you're new to this channel, I encourage you to watch Rigging for Beginners before you take this course. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to take what you've learned and apply these tools and techniques to your own project. With that, let's get started. Here I am inside Maya and I've got Billy with me. I modeled this guy in ZBrush and retopologized in Maya and I'm ready to go. Now, as you all know, if you've been following my sessions and tutorials, I always, when it comes to rigging, I always start with orthographic. In this case, side view. I need to make sure that X-ray joints is enabled and I can start with the skeleton. So I'm gonna start from the base of the neck and if I were to be anatomically correct, I need to end this joint here, just under the earlobe. But uh, with that, I'm not going to get good deformation for the neck. So I, instead, I'm going to pick the, uh, the jawline that I have. So I'm going to select here, click, and one more click to end this joint. With that, I've got the neck bone and the head bone. So let's actually rename them really quick before we get ahead of ourselves. So I'm just going to select this one. I will follow the exact same naming convention in Rigging for Beginners tutorials in case if you would like to combine the two. Now with this one, I'm going to use JNT underscore head. And of course you already know for the end joints, it's going to be JNT E underscore head zero one. Now let's get into the upper jaw and lower jaw. I'm going to zoom in just a tad. I don't want to connect the lower jaw to here because then the deformation we're going to get is not going to be um, as good. So I will pick somewhere around here and then click to end the chain. I'm probably going to enable wireframe on shaded so I'm being mindful of the topology I have. Now with that lower jaw selected, I'm gonna press Control D and E to rotate and rotate this chain up and select this and just push that slightly back. Now you can see I used rotate instead of orient and if that happens, you need to make sure that you freeze transformation you already know by now that i tend to use this value instead of rotation but if you would like to rotate that's totally fine just freeze transform when everything is done now the issue i have is these two are um, not connected to the main chain so with these two selected i'm going to select the head and press the p key to Parent. Now this is a bit difficult to see so I'm probably going to radius and reduce this down to probably 0.7. That's better. And let's um, do two things. I'm going to fix the joint orient for the end joint. So I'm just going to zero out the orient. So X is going to be down the chain. I'm going to do the same thing here. So there is no orient values. Also with all of these bones selected, I'm gonna just do one round of freeze transformation. So modify freeze transform just to make sure that there is no rotation values in there and every joint is clean. So when we connect all the controls, there won't be any sliding and going back to the original pose is viable. Now let's uh, rename them really quick. So I'm gonna select the upper jaw and I'm going to call it JNT underscore upper jaw zero one. Probably going to copy the name to save some time. JNT E upper jaw and then select the lower jaw. All I need to do is to change upper with lower. 
copy the name and the end joint is going to be JNT E lower jaw. Perfect. Now with those done, I can probably focus on the eyes. I put everything on the this on a display layer, so I probably need to go to channel box and just toggle back the visibility so it's not referenced. And I'm going to select the face, press the hatch so I get to see things better. Also, another adjustment is to check the pivot. If I click on it, the pivot for the eye should be at the center, and at the moment it's not. So let's go and fix that really quick. Modify center pivot. Chances are I need to do that for the other eye as well. Yes, modify center pivot. Switching back to the orthographic. So let's create our eye chain. I'm going to hold down X, click, and then click. Looks great. Without going any further, I'm going to rename it. So JNT underscore L I01. And for the end joints, it's going to be JNT E L I01. That's fantastic. Now, the question is, how can we place that at the center of the geometry? And we've already had videos on that and we introduced multiple methods to achieve that. The simplest way, since it's facial rigging for beginners, is to select the geometry, select the eye chain, make sure you're in rigging menu set and go to constrain, point constrain with maintain offset off. So it does the offset, click, and there we have it. It's right at the center. Just you need to be mindful of this little guy, the joint constraint node itself, we don't need it anymore. Press delete to get rid of it. With that, if I go to the perspective and zoom in, you can see this eye joint is exactly right at the center of the geometry. Probably I need to adjust the end joint just a tad. So I'm going to move it in Z just to be right at the center of the pupil for this um, end eye joint. Looks good. Probably I need to bring the geometry back. Now, another improvement I would like to make to this rig is not only to have um, geometry for the eyeball but also for the eyelids as well i'm going to toggle back reference so i'm not going to select the geometry by accident now to do that i need to duplicate this chain and have one for the upper eyelid and another half for the lower eyelid so that's easy Control d and you can either rotate and if I rotate, I need to make sure that I have a free transform applied, but you can always just as an alternative, I'm sure you know that already, but you can always use your joint orient instead. I'm going to use rotation and fair enough, I can just apply one round of freeze transform to clean up my rotation channels. I'm going to duplicate the chain again, bring one down, probably this joint, I can go to component and just drag it a little bit lower because I am being mindful of the topology and I think I need slightly longer joints for these guys. Now, probably I need to bring this one down to the center a little, same as this one. And with that, I'm going to freeze the orient of these joints. Now, these joints are extremely important. These are the joints that we are going to skin to the eyelid. So these are not really end joints. These are the main joints. And this is just a base to hold this main joint. And the reason I'm saying this, because we kind of need to think about it when we rename it. Probably these joints are just a tad big. So I'm going to reduce the radius to probably something like 0 
So there is a little bit of size difference when it comes to the main eye joint and the supporting or eyelid joints. Okay, that looks good to me. But remember, we have rotation values. We do not want to forget about that. So I'm just going to go to modify and simply freeze transform. With that, we have translate values, which is okay and totally normal on a joint or a bone, but we do not have any rotation. And that's what we want. Now, um, let's rename them really quick because I really don't want these guys to pile up and we have just 10 minutes renaming things. We rename as we go. So this main base joint, I'm just going to call this joint JNT base L and I'm going to call this one upper lid 01 and I can copy the name, go into the main eyelid joint and call this JNT upper lid 01. That was easy. Let's do that for the lower lid. So JNT base L lower lid 01 and copy the name and this time is going to be JNT, not base, not end, just JNT, L lower lid, zero, one. Now, right now, if I were to select both of these guys and try to create that blinking effect, I can't because they're not mirrored. I actually need to select one and flip it 100 and 80 degrees in X so when I select them I can get that blinking effect. How cool is that? I can actually use the opportunity bring them over here and as you can see there's some tweaking needs to be done bring this one align them together they don't need to be exactly aligned I can actually move this one here so it's aligned with the eye joint you know, just take your time, make sure that the effect that you would like to get makes sense, make sure that you have a, like a pleasing result. And once it's done, once you form and sculpt your blinking, then you can bring them back to the position that they were in. So all those, those two base, and you can see the rotation value is full of um, clutter which we don't want but the beauty of it is now you can just go ahead bring this to the what you think would be the default pose and you go to modify and you can easily go freeze transform now if i select both of them you can see they're blinking just fine and it looks great later on we'll learn how to connect everything to a channel so we can control our blinks with just an attribute now I don't need my wireframe on shaded anymore and those eye joints look great. Now where should I connect them? So this guy goes to not to the head bone. You've got to be very careful. You don't want to connect that to the head bone. Otherwise, when you open the mouth, the eye control will stay put, something that we don't want. We instead would like to parent them to the jaw. So if I, with that selected, press the P key. So if I click on that, you can see the eye bone follows. I'm gonna do the same thing for these two and pressing the P key. So if I open the jaw, you can see the eye chain follows. Fantastic. Now, half of our chain is done. All I need to do is to just mirror this to the other side. So I'm going to select that and we can do it one by one. I can go to mirror joints, left to right, and then YZ is the plane that we have and apply. Select the lower eyelid, apply or you can press G to repeat the last tool, select the main iron bone and apply. And with that, you can see we're getting just the right naming convention. 
And if you were to select these two guys to create that blink, it works beautifully. So that's it for the skeleton. Let's very quickly clean up the scene. So to clean up, I need to put this guy on a group. So the whole character goes into a group and I'm gonna call this group Billy underscore rig. Now this joint needs to be underneath or inside the Billy rig and the skeleton, whatever we create is going to be inside the group as well. And we're gonna call this skeleton 01. Now both character model and the skeleton, we don't want to rotate them, translate them or scale them. So select all of them, lock and hide selected. For the Billy character, because we are going to include control curves in that group as well, we definitely do not want to have visibility on. So lock and hide visibility on the main node. Now this node skeleton will have IKs and will have controls inside it. Now all of those will be inside another group node, which is the global node. Now I'm going to make sure that this global node also has got its visibility locked and hidden. Now with that, any skeleton we create goes inside skeleton. If we have any IKs, that IK will be separately on an IK handle folder and any controls will go inside control curves. And this structure is exactly the same structure that we used for rigging for beginner series. And the reason that I made everything compatible is for you to combine those two series to rig a full character, including facial skeleton. Now this section is done. Let's um, move to the next one where we bind this chain to the geometry and we go over some skinning recap tools and take it from there. See you guys in the next one.